Hi. Hi, Ned Rush. Hi. How's it going? Fine, thank you. How are you doing? I'm all right. It's a bit a bit more warmer in the studio than it was last time. Same here. A little callback there. Everything is fine. Okay. Um, so we're here now for the final part of this mini series, mini project, um, where we both went away, um, went our separate ways and made a track. And now we've come back together as discussed to discuss our work and show our progress. It's a bit like school. <laughs> yeah. Is it like, what have you been doing this summer? I, I, I woke <laughs> up this back. morning and I was like, oh, I haven't finished my track. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to finish it. And it's kind of finished, I think, but... Uh, but your dog uh, ate it. My dog ate my song. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, okay, so for, so for everyone who see this uh, video first and they haven't seen the previous one, you can check out, there's two slightly different versions. Uh, there is one on Ned Rash channel and then one on mine, where we talk a little bit more in detail, but it's basically we're exploring scales and more specifically transpositions and maybe moving between scales and just exploring to make, you know, a bit more melodically complex stuff. How, 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 like when you, when you made your stuff, like how, did you feel like you had that you already knew what you were doing and this is like i'm just going to share this thing that i've been doing for years or did you do something that you felt like you were challenging yourself a bit um it, it was uh, challenging um and perplexing at times but i sort of had a clear idea of what i was going to do when i started the track because i'd sort of already discussed it with you in the first video which was like, I'm going to find some similarities between these three transpositions and then maybe use that as a focal point for a, for a melodic idea. Whether I've done that or not, I can't remember. But um, one thing I did stumble on was that the, 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 the three or four notes that I did look at that were all similar between the three chords actually were the notes of the first chord I played. Which, oh. was, which was kind of weird, maybe with the exception of the A sharp, because the, I don't think there would be an A sharp in a straight up A minor seven. But that doesn't mean that A sharp wouldn't work over an A minor seven chord. Anyway, so that I was a little bit like scratching my head with that. But um, uh, otherwise, there were a couple of new things I tried, which I've not done before, like um, using modulators to switch between different scale plugins different instances so like i was going from one scale to another scale to another scale and rather than transpose the midi because i was using lots of midi processing to generate all the notes i had to like use a thing to switch between different chains in time with the beat to get them to oh okay so a li little bit we, we we talked about it and we did a little experiment with that was that sort of thing where you, yeah i've not really done that before Yes, really I have done that sort of before, but never as complex as literally. It was literally at the. I worked on a track generator that should ideally generate an entire track. And the first thing was just it just picked a scale and then that was it. It never transitioned between them. I tried to do that in a, I, I wanted to be super clever and make everything super automated. <laughs> And I just tied myself in a massive knot and I realized it was just like a never ending story. So I ended up going down a different route, which we can talk about when we listen to the different tracks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I also yeah. went super automated and completely generated. Even the arrangement is generated and yeah, and I, I, I didn't, just... yeah, I had to record again because mine is like, oh my goodness, this is just, yeah, <laughs> I just made it too complicated for myself okay well but you did it you actually did it i did it yeah well in the video when i did that live stream last week i sort of looked at ways at which you can use follow actions to kind of create a arrangement ideas by simple by simply jumping to empty clips oh yeah um so yeah you would have like a just a clip that's an equal length to another clip and then if they jump to another clip it's empty so it's kind of almost like muting it Mm. And then if you have like several in instances of that, when one track jumps to a muted clip, another track might keep going or play a variation of something with, with MIDI in. And then 
you just get parts that come in and out and then and then i just basically recorded that over to the arrange page for four minutes and that's my song <laughs> but i i i have i have thought about that because i think it's an interesting technique but i was always worried that it's it could be that it's just all silence it's unlikely, but it could also be like, all right, we just got a hi hat now. <laughs> the song doesn't want to. The song doesn't want to play. Yeah, so exactly. I'm not it's playing just, your song. Yeah, let's say you have eight tracks, and it's like, okay, we got the hi hat running for eight bars now, and then you know everything comes back or something. I mean, yeah. it's sort of funny, and you can always fix it afterwards. But anyway, do you want to go first, or okay. do we want to say anything more before we go? Um, no, I, I mean. I'll no I've got I'm happy to go first I was okay. always happy even in school I was happy to go first because I was just like, I want to get it over and done with okay go for it and even though I saw 20 seconds of this in your live stream I <laughs> can't say I actually heard anything so uh my preferences window is open I don't know why that is all right um let's just do a quick sound check see if it's did you hear that yes was it loud, quiet? Is it all right? It sounds, sounds right. Okay, this is my song.
There we go. That's my song. Well done. I think your one sounds way more interesting than my, mine is. Okay, before we talk about the arrangement bit, the slow arp cap one, I think it is. Is that what's doing that Aphex Twin sounds sort of a little bit fragile, sort slow of arp dreamy, cap. maybe? I'd, yes. What is that? What's, what's making that sound? Uh, operator and... Uh some ah, chorus okay. and probably a tiny bit of pitch modulation i i talked a bit in my live stream about um my thoughts regarding micro tuning versus simple pitch modulation and how i thought that pitch modulation was more interesting because you you're gonna get if you play the same note, you're going to get a different note, a different pitch each each time. Whereas if you use a microtonal scale, even mm. if all of the notes are slightly out of tune, they're going to stay in that tuning. Yes, so, I suppose like when you're doing that that thing, it's going to make it feel like more like an old drifting analog synthesizer, even if it's just like really tiny drifting things. So I'm just playing one note now. Each each one is a different is a tiny bit out of tune. Hmm. Beautiful. That's classic warp there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. T tell me tell tell me what's happening in terms of scales. What what did you implement? Uh, well, the so actually in the uh, session view, these are the sort of starting points um so it was c minus seven to d sharp back to c and then to a minus seven so that's an a minus seven chord transposed up three semitones and then down three semitones from and then three semitones again oh yeah, yeah. um and then i just took each uh like chord so on this one that just plays the chord into like a pad sound and then on this one well, it was going into an arpeggiator that was very slow just to kind of go up and down and around. Um, the bass, there were sort of two, well, three, it's just like a normal sub bass, which is just doing single notes, um, as is this more funky bass, which was running into a process of going into an arpeggiator at 16th notes with the expression control which has forgotten the mapping. Shall we go into the trick? Uh, yeah, go on then. Tell me about the trick. Well, okay. before you do that, we'll just say Ableton. Um, in the current version of Live, it doesn't save mappings on expression control and maybe some other things if you're watching okay. Ableton. I'm talking <laughs> so to you. Select expression control, just expression control. Yes. Delete it. Undo. <gasps> It's back. Like yes. A ghost. Yes, exactly. The thing is, it's just a bit of a nightmare if you're using loads of them like I do. But if you're in a sticky position, it's like, ah, oh, I don't know. You can just do that. Delete them and undo, and then you're good to go again. <laughs> well, that's not but, problem solved. Um, <laughs> but I think Ableton, good. it would be great if you sort it out. <laughs> yes, I think that's probably something they need to address. Um, yeah. So yeah, so the arpeggiators were on this funky bass is triggering at 16th notes going into this expression control, which is modulating the note length. And then on the operator, um, I've got one voice and I've got the, the glide on so that when notes are quite long, they overlap and create a glide. And when they're very short, they don't. So it's a nice mixture of like staccato notes and legato notes. Um, and then some velocity here to probably do stuff like modulate the time of the envelope, which is like my favorite thing to do. Um, and a bit of FM, uh, and then some couple of beat repeats, and then the same sort of thing for this squeaky lead, just in a higher register and a different sound. And then this melody I played, I just played on the keyboard, just sort of jammed along, just playing the three, the four, yeah, the, the four notes that I found that were the ones that were the similar notes in the three transpositions. So exactly as I did when we had our first call, I lined the chords up and made a note of which ones were... Um, so which scale... Overlapping. Sorry, I missed you then. I You glitched out a bit. 
Oh, okay. Sorry. So you 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 checked which ones were overlapping. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. So I went. Yeah. I did like like as we did in our first conversation. I got the three clips and looked at them and then made a note of which ones were, um, you know, all in were all the same note from the separate chords. And then I made a note mm -hmm. of them here, and it was D sharp, A sharp, G, and C, which weirdly is a C minor chord, C minor seven chord. So I just kind of played a C minor um sort of just this oh why isn't that working why can't i get my keyboard so did you get did you go for a c minus a c minor scale is that what you went for to start with you said uh the i just i just went with a chord i just did the chord i just i just put that chord in and then i transposed it up and then transposed it down and then when i realized what similar notes there were between between the the three transpositions i just played those notes over mm. the whole thing i just sort of dilly dallied around that um recorded that and then i recorded all of that midi processing i rooted each track to another midi track mm. and then recorded what it sort of spat out gotcha copied it back into the original track and so if we look at the the bass, this is like what this is all the MIDI that the the process spat out. So I recorded it back in. You can see here where like that notes overlapped and some of them haven't. And yeah, so that was the MIDI part. And then I created mm. these follow actions and I did some stuff with the drum support in a drum loop and did like different um, instances of the drum. Some of them are backwards, some of them is a time stretch, blah blah blah, blah and just sort of. Um, did some follow actions with that and then i did follow actions on the whole uh sections and did a few where they would jump to empty clips there's nothing in there so kind of like inserting silence so mm. and then just before the call i recorded it all over in here so you can see how some of these are just empty because it jumped to an empty clip just to effectively say don't have anything there so kind of automatic arrangement generative arrangement if you will but I mean, it's 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 a super good technique, even if you want to, if you would want to go in and tweak this structure, so you have, you know, sort of tension and release, you already have like something to start with here. You know, you don't even have to sort of think about. You've got a sort of a scaffold. Then you sort of just remove and add things as you know if you've tried this it's, it's, when you do it like this you get sort of an even spread across rather than sort of building up to something and you know like an ambient sections they may happen yeah does that make sense yeah 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 so i in retrospect whilst i was listening back i was thinking oh i really haven't done enough with the dynamics of the arrangement so it's one thing to sort of just create an arrangement where you have a certain collection of parts together and then you take one out you bring in a new one you chop and change between various parts and collections of parts but it, it doesn't really amount to much if you don't kind of highlight uh those transitions and like you know that can be as easy as something like a a crash symbol or can be as you know more interesting as some interesting sound design and perhaps even kind of like opening and closing filters and envelopes on certain instruments so that you know, when they do build up to something, maybe the filters open up and the um, mm. the envelopes open up so that they become these big sounds, and then you kind of pull them back to slightly more smaller, plucky sounds. And that can that can just take one melodic idea and turn it into something very flexible and dynamic. And I didn't do so, that. So a challenge for uh, anyone who's listening now and making generative music, if you have made something generative that actually have those elements in there rather than something sounding great but sort of just organically move on but haven't do those build-ups and release and transitions and tension and like do manage to incorporate that into a generative technique please share with us yes in the comments yes um so uh that's kind of it for me really and then i did a couple of like things on the sends where and another trick i like to do is i like to sort of use a beat repeat as kind of like a gate on a send so it will sort of intermittently let through a bit of sound that i've bust that track 
And then oh, that will yeah. go into some reverbs and I've used um, spectral time here. And then on the drums earlier on, just before we came on the call, I did like a, I did some like wacky, did the same thing, LFO mapping between different chains. And then some of them have got wacky, shifty, sort of zoomy. Yes, that was, <laughs> was, that, was, that, was that what you did on the beat? What is, what is making that? It was, I loved it. Like that sort of pitching. <laughs> Let's go back to the start. Ah, uh, yeah. What's quite nice is that the, when you change tail, uh, when you change chain, the tail mm. remains from the previous chain. Yes. Which is very nice. Although it would be nice if you could turn that off. I guess you can bat to the you, mutes, can't you? Well, no, you can also do, um, if you attach them to a macro knob and then you automate the macro knob, you can actually turn each chain off because you can set the sort of macro knob range. I don't know if that makes sense because then you can do that literally cutting, cutting it off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so if you do, Oh yeah, chain selector. You got that. And if you right click, what is it that you do? I can't make the LFO stop. <laughs> no. Anyway, but you, you can set that within that it should be turning it on and off if it's just within a certain range. The good thing about that is that you get it saves CPU. So if you have like super complex chains of effects that's just eating your computer CPU, so when you go to another one, it just turns the other ones off. But I like, like you were saying that, that you just get the effect keeps running. So you, yeah, it's almost like using an orc send in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess that's right. kind of my track. Um, well done. And a uh, bit of make it loud glue compressor on the bus, which you should never do. Let, let, leave that to the mastering engineer. Kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just did it for fun because I like it. I know it's fun. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's it. That's my track. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> okay. Does that mean that it's my turn now? <laughs> now it's your turn. Okay. All right. Deep breaths. Um, <laughs> it's not three hours long, is it? Or well, that's just your video about making it. <laughs> yeah. Not that yeah, I actually, it three hours. But before we move on to my track, um, so you have a video that's currently online where people can follow your process. Is that right? Yes. Last week, uh, maybe this time, or, or maybe it was Thursday, I can't remember, but um, I, w I was going to film, I was going to do a video, but then I knew it was going to be quite a long video. So, and I, I couldn't really be bothered to ed do the editing. So I thought I'll just go live instead. And it was actually kind of quite good fun. Quite a few people tuned in. And um, it's been a while since I've sort of tried to make a track live on the internet, um, but it was kind of fun and I'll, and I'll maybe do it again. Um, especially now that I have a, a decent computer that can handle all these demanding tasks. Very good. Okay. Shall I try and I'll probably play my track first and then we can talk a little bit about what's going on. Should we do that? Okay. Yep. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So that was that. Very interesting. Could you hear it? Yes, I, I could. This so. <laughs> is sitting here in silence and no one hears anything. Okay. Um, what shall I do now? Shall I talk a little bit about what I've done? Yes. There was some yeah. fantastic bass in there. And uh, I thought maybe there were like some little field recordings in there or something or or is it all synthesized uh some some of the little glitches may be from field recordings that i've done but there were no it's not just sort of a long sample or anything i use these percussion to percussion things i don't think they're field recordings let me see no i think they all synthesized little glitches that i'm automating to death but there were a few things that I sort of had decided that I wanted to try to fit in here that's why it sort of feels like a demo track I suppose I wanted to explore um, just transposing within a scale but I also wanted to be able to shift from one scale to another and I was speaking to a neighbor the other day and his friend is some apparently some amazing jazz guitarist and apparently his philosophy is or not philosophy the thing that he enjoys is to he just sort of throw himself into a hole you know throw himself somewhere difficult and then what he enjoys is sort of manage to musically get out of that hole so if he plays the scale and then he sort of forces himself to be able to transition to some other scale in some other key and working out like how shall i get from a to b and that was something that I found quite fascinating. How if I succeeded, I don't know. But I've I literally just also for my own sanity, I've made some little notes up here, just add track markers. So the first section is in uh, minor pentatonic D sharp black keys, and then I decided to go up three semitones here, so it's in F sharp instead. But for some reason that transition felt quite sharp like it, it was just jarring so I decided to try to do a little I don't know if you can call it a bridge but it's literally a small section it's just a few bars here where I just kept the notes that were both in the D sharp and in the F sharp version of the scale so this would be something that both of these would share so there would be more of a natural transition and that seemed to work quite well and then i decided to do here shift between this scale that i never ever used before qomi um and but also in f sharp and those two seem to do like that transition went quite naturally um and then at the end i'm transitioning from kuomi f sharp back into minor pentatonic d sharp and again doing four bars here where i just kept whatever notes both of these scales had in common to just to create that smooth transition between them um the other thing that i thought about and tried by going from D sharp to F sharp in minor pentatonic, there's two things you can do. You can take the exact melody, and in this section, you literally just take that melody and shift it up three semitones, and all of a sudden, they will be all the right notes. But you can also take exactly the melody you had, and you only shift the notes that happens to not be in the scale. So it will be a slightly different melody but similar enough to the original melody, but you're just making sure it's within the scale. So I played around with those different things. Um, what else is there to say? For the, the melody and the bass, I literally just drew them in by hand, and I think just to add a bit of randomness to some of them, maybe not the bass, the melody. I just drag down the chance a bit so you just get a bit of variation in the melody this little sparkle melody which sounds like this that was literally i don't know if i removed it oh yes i've just turned it off i used uh... shut up <laughs> what, <laughs> what was is it doing that? that's quite good that. yeah <laughs> Uh, so I used the step sequence of just to randomly generate like 
lots of material. It was just going to be a little melody that sits on top of the main melody. Uh, and then probably different to yours, but I also used lots of uh, expression control and things like that just to sort of animate the hell out of the the different parts. So I think... That's a very nice bass. So that is an operator layered with a wavetable. And the operator, I am modulating. I think it's only for the first oscillator. I'm actually using expression control to choose a different waveform. <laughs> it's just jumping between them. I think I've set, yeah, the envelope is set to loop as well. And I'm also uh, using expression control to just pick a different algorithm here for every key that it's pressing. Yeah. And I think that one is fairly thin, the operator. Are oh, not too bad. So, and then I have a wave, wave table, which is just more of a subby triangle wave going through. And just had a bit of grit and got the vocoder on there. And then this little trick where I've taken the multiband dynamics, but I'm actually not doing any compression i've literally here the first one i've soloed the bass soloed the mid solo the highs so i make sure the bass is in mono and then in the mids i think i got a sort of spring reverb or something on there that it's not spring it's some other reverb and then on the top one i got something else going on oh yes i got some some delay that i'm also sort of modulating the hell out of adding a bit of saturation to get a bit of sparkle. And then I got the Q3 to do some EQing. And also, I, I mean, I, a similar sort of thing on all these tracks. Um, I'm also using the Melda Productions um, free effect bundle. I think they're amazing and they sound so good. I don't know them. What are they? Uh, Melda Productions is a, a company that makes VST plugins, but they have the whole... A whole range, a whole bundle, which is all for free. And I have to admit, their comb filter, I just use it all the time. It's just like glitch heaven. And they also got, unfortunately, you can't automate these, but they got a, a random function. So you can just like keep pressing that until you just get something really unexpected. And I think especially the comb filter just sounds, sounds so good. Free to download, worth worthwhile checking out. And their reverb sounds nice. Flanger, they also got sort of ring modulators and stuff. Let me see. I'm just going to mail the productions. Yes. So all of these plugins are free. Uh, there's some of them I've never used, but the comb filter, like just, just download that one. It sounds great. It can do things that I can't, that's difficult to do with the stuff in Ableton. So it's nice. Uh, all right. Can we um, yeah. hear the bass by itself then, just for a bit? Because it's, just the bass. Just, just the, the bass. bass for a bit, so we can sort of hear that. sounds like a double bass with like <laughs> yes there's something clangy and sort of rattly like a double bass about it let's see if we can let's see if we can find some transitions oh i don't know what i've done it feels like i have changed something now while we're speaking there's a lot of clattery stuff happening oh is that not on purpose no i think it was in there but yeah Have you had enough? Or do you want more? <laughs> no, I'm kind of. I like it. It's it's it does sound like um, someone playing like a double bass through like a pedal or something. Yes, um, yes. Like you got that sort of slappy sound, I suppose. It sounds quite slappy, which I like. Um, yeah, like it's it kind of made me a couple of times when I've done sort of 
sort of um, crazy bass, like modulated bass, particularly FM, is that I might do a thing where I'll put a reverb on it, but I'll really, really aggressively like high pass the filter so that it only lets through like high frequencies. Mm. So that the the low end parts don't get any reverb on come come through quite clean. But if there's so if there's like a sudden sort of FM modulation that goes into quite high frequencies, they go through the the reverb. So you kind of get reverb on just the high frequencies and the low I, frequencies. I, I suppose it's it's a little bit like this, isn't it? Like so, I just keep the so if we don't actually just mute, just keep that one. That should just. Oh, that's. <laughs> anyway <laughs> i like it it's good <laughs> i don't know what uh, so yeah so i've also recorded a really long video which is i don't know it's probably going to be a bit of a endurance test it's it's like three hours something long it's rendering at the moment and um yeah it will be up there for anyone who just want to dig in and see how i did any particular parts of this i still th I, th I think i think it's tricky because i don't think i've made anything where i have considered the melody as much as i've done here i mean it still sounds muddy and a mess but i like with your one that there is some there's more unpredictability in there it feels like there's more surprise and it's uh, something there might have been i've already forgotten my how my track goes okay <laughs> i'm too busy thinking about your bass now <laughs> do you want it i can send it to you, so you yeah send it to me I'll, 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 I'll probably um i'll probably go and try and send it myself but send it to me anyway just for a laugh um, <laughs> yeah yeah and you have to download Elder productions download those those because i think they are what am i using on this one or maybe i'm not using any of the Melda productions on this one no i'm not apart from the q3 but you can just substitute that for um eq8 or whatever other favorite eq you might have as they say yeah. on as they say in radio other plugins are available oh yeah <laughs> um yeah well so i mean i uh, i enjoyed it very much um what about the drums anything you would i think i saw one of my drum breaks in there i did i other, thought like because uh, i yeah other drum breaks are available <laughs> so there it is dust 160 That's yes and there's two there's two versions oh, i'm also using let's let's just mute that's two channels here which is in a little Sorry. That's just, that is dust. Is that the same break or is it a different one? Uh, anyway, it's one of your breaks that I've just thrown into the simpler and then I'm just using randomized just to jump between them and lots of modulation. And I got some, yeah, again, a sort of echo and I'm filtering a bit, some saturation and then underneath I just did a manual job, just chopping up. Uh... And that's obviously going through a beat repeat, which I should maybe just turn off briefly because otherwise it won't work. And then I just added another wow. layer of like just kicks underneath. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the first um, for the first sort of uh, opening part of this song, it reminded me a little bit of some of the later tracks on the Come to Daddy EP. And then I thought to myself, oh, we've both kind of done Aphex Twin sounding tracks just from slightly different eras. Yes. Your, yours <laughs> yeah, perhaps the late nineties, mine perhaps the mid two thousands, the Tuss era, um, yeah. which says a lot about. The power of us, I think. <laughs> yes. I, I, I'm wondering what's, I think this was a good exercise for me. I've also, by doing this, I've also probably come up with what I would like to explore next in regards to this. And I think 
it is much more to do with relationship between different scales and when to change and how often. Because I think by doing this, I now have some tools that allows me to transition between scales or doing transpositions that sort of more or less can make it work. But for that to result in an interesting track, this sort of format of doing these sort of changes and this often is literally just, I just did it without thinking much. So it's something I would like to, which scales are interesting together. And I, I've, I'm, I have bad habits of using the same scales all the time. And I probably want to explore some that I usually don't use just to see what flavor they give. I have a suggestion yeah. for that, because we've been talking a lot about reharmonization in my little cliquey Ned Rush community that I have on Patreon. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, we've been swapping around all these ideas. So one thing, one way to kind of approach that might be is that you, you, you start with a chord. So let's say that it's C minor seven mm. and you look at what notes you have. So we've got C, D sharp, G and, and uh, A sharp or B flat or whatever. And you could pick one of those notes, let's say you pick the D sharp and you could go, well, what other chords or scales have got D sharp in? Well, um, anyway, I should stop sharing my screen, actually. Stop sharing your screen. <laughs> yeah. Now, like I need to, I'm trying to think about, I'm not very good on the piano, so it takes me a little while, but like, I mean, D, D sharp, for example, is the minor third of C minor but it's also the major seventh of um, of E. So you could go to E major, but play an E major seven. So you're kind of, that's that's a completely different sort of, well, that's just another way to look at it really, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Um, and then, you know, when you go, when you get to E major seven, you could look at that and you can go, what have I got in there? Well, I've got a, I've got a G sharp. You could pick another chord uh, or scale that's got G sharp in that's not E major. Um, and that could be, uh, what could that be? F sharp minor. Mm. And then you kind of think, oh, well, I'm in F sharp minor now. So that's kind of perhaps sort of another way to look for opportunities. Of course, you can just go wherever you want and somehow make it work. But if you're trying to think of a way of like a link mm. from kind of one to the other. I'm um, also wondering, like, how often do you do, do you do a, um, if you have a really, sh if you're changing too often, it's just going to sound random. Like what's the, for the brain, how long do you need it to run it for? Like at least eight bars or, and the other thing is like, do you do little bridges where you do the transition or do you do a clean cut as in like after 16 or 32 bars or whatever it is, you're just like, okay, I transition transition into the other scale immediately. Or do you have a few bars where you travel between the scales? in a nice way and you land in the new scale uh, i mean i would probably um for my own personal taste i would probably do it at a reasonable pace of like perhaps every four bars or every eight bars or mm. or 16 bars or something depending on what other elements i want to put in if i've got like a kind of um quite a fast 16th note bass which i like to do sometimes like that if you move that too quickly, that could be a little bit too much, but I don't know, could be a bar. You could go every, every bar, one, two, three, four, change, one, two, three, four, change, one, two, three, four, change, and then glue it together that way. And that's like your chord progression is your mm. four, over four bars. If you like to do things in groups of four or whatever. Um, I don't really know. Just try, I guess, just try and see what sort of. Yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do and, and do something. Yeah. What about you? What's your next step? I'm going to do yes. that thing I was just saying about like looking at a chord and then, and then oh. thinking of like, yeah. So like just looking at a chord, picking a random chord, minor seven, and then picking a note in that chord and going, mm. right. That I, so I'm in C minor seven. Now I've got D sharp there. What other chords or scales have D sharp in? And then I might have to use my brain or go and look them up. And then mm. I'll think, well, all right, well that one has, let's try and move to that one. See how that sounds. If it sounds good, then keep it and then repeat the process maybe you might even come back you might even come back round to see mm. it, it so if you can come back round as well that's kind of could be quite interesting because some of these like kind of um not mathematical but perhaps methodical um changes 
you can only come back round so many times. Like if you go up a minor third, one, two, three, four, you're back round again. If you go up a major third each time, one, so one, two, you've only got, you come around three times after three transpositions. So, you know, it's kind of like, how often do you want to come back round? Because if you have a chord progression where you're going up a major third each time and you do it over a bar, your chord progression is three bars long. That's a bit weird. <laughs> so you've got to think about what am I going to do about that or just leave it like that. I don't yeah. Know. So, yeah, lots to, lots to uh, think about and try. Yeah, for sure. What about you? I think that, but also I want to really do the the thing that I got twisted up. What I what, what I was trying first to do something way more automated that just takes care of this, where you have the note plugin that sits on lots of different channels, and you can automatically do the transpositions. And also do that you have a chain selector with all the different scales in and then you set up a system that every four bars there is maybe a 50 50 chance that a change will be triggered and if a change is triggered that will be a to a degree a random trigger but it will set up all the channels in the same way so you know you see so you just get an automated progression like that a little bit like those kind of old auto accompaniment Casio keyboards from yeah. the eighties. Yes, where, 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 yeah, where there was a backing track and you could press in a different key and the backing track just yeah, changed. you'd sit yeah. like you used to sit it spot yeah. on over, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then yes. hold down a note and it would go. Do, 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 do. That, that wasn't a bossa nova. What I just did. That was. It could be like what. Yeah, imagine that if Fix Twin would have been behind one of those keyboards and he would have done the backing tracks. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you yeah, can yeah, just yeah, freestyle yeah. with the other hand on top, make a melody. <laughs> no, I think I think that's a good uh, call for to to bring back the auto accompaniment concept yeah. of like. But then, yes, yeah, to sort of be able to kind of say, I know that there's like, I mean, I, I've got this keyboard I've got here has got like. Um, like a built-in sequencer and a built-in ar arpeggiator and like mm. scale stuff like that but like there's something for um also kind of like just which you can kind of do in ableton if you kind of have one note and then you draw in a chord with the chord plugin and then go to like um you know draw in like a major th a minor third whatever intervals you want mm. but then when when you move when you move to a different root note you obviously shift the entire chord and if you run that into an arpeggiator, you can get like some interesting, then you can just go wherever you want. And then you do a transposition that way. And sometimes that can, can sound a bit sort of um, early nineties rave. Cause like they just, they would, they would sample like a chord, chord stab. Yeah. Yeah. Go up and down the keyboard with it, which is why well, like, a lot of early nineties rave have got really drastic chord transposition in them. That, that one, <laughs> up there, the U Juno one. And also I think as some of the Korg, is it the poly? 61 or something they have chord memory and that's exactly that and isn't it called like if a jazz pianist would do that it's called planing isn't it that you just like like it's the same chord but you're just like moving your hand up and down the keyboard it's i think it's called planing i don't know someone yeah. will tell us we'll ask dan more he'll know yeah he will know but also behringer if you've lost if you have sort of run out of keyboards to replicate maybe we need a new toy keyboard with contemporary accompaniments i've got i've uh, yeah i've got a couple of old casios they're at my mum's at the moment i keep meaning to bring them around one of them's a bit like i think maybe doesn't work and okay. one of them will work but I, I don't know if i can get the power supply for it and the and the, the the coils on the batteries are too corroded but i can't really bring myself to to throw it away because it's my childhood okay. um but yeah it does it's got all that auto accompaniment in it but like yeah I think there's got to be some sort of there's there's got to be like a Casio home keyboard, but with like trap as a genre. <laughs> yeah, I, I this is awful. I found this video where someone takes apart. I think it's a Casio keyboard, and he's doing circuit bending by putting um, worms on the circuit board and, and, and the worms are creating the the connections and as they sort of moving around you know like they just keep creating new connections what yeah what does that does that hurt the worms apparently he says they it doesn't but i am just got to feel like 
who are you to do? Like, How who do are you, you know to what know? the worms yeah. feel? <laughs> yes, exactly. You don't know the worms' feelings. Maybe they're in a. It could be in a complete panic. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ah! exactly. <laughs> Music. Yeah. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Can you send? Is that on YouTube? Did you say? Yes. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Send it to me. I want to. Yeah. I want to see the worms squirm. Uh, on the circuit. <laughs> Or worms. What a what a what a crazy, horrible genius idea. <laughs> Save one hundred pounds on Google on, on. Six A. Now only two nine. I suppose we shouldn't stream another YouTube thing that might be treacherous, but I'll send it to you so you, I can put a link in the yeah. description or something, and everything will be fine. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, um, all right. Well, all I right. guess we can wrap it up there then, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's wrap up. I guess that was a successful project. Um, yes, I think we, so. I learned got, something. Yeah, I learned some things. I tried some new things. I explored some of my old favorite things. Um, we got some music done and uh, yeah, it was good. So yeah, I, well, I guess I'll put my mine on Patreon. Well, I've kind of done that already anyway, but I guess I'll put it up anyway in its current state just to stick with the format. Are you sharing any of this with you? I'm definitely going to share the the finished track if anyone wants that via Patreon. I can also put the project file up there, uh, but there will be some plugins that people may not have. Um, but I think you can substitute some of them for because when you open a, an Ableton file and you don't have the plugins, it will just not. It will still open the file, I think, and just skip. It's mainly sort of EQing and stuff. So everyone listening, please check out our Patreons. That's what you're meant to say when you're on YouTube, right? Yeah, I sometimes forget. And yeah. I forget to say, please like and subscribe. Yeah, and check out our merch stores. Oh, yeah, we now have both. I basically copied your merch store. <laughs> That's basically, we have the same merch store. Go and buy yeah. our merch. Yes, I have now. A, I have a Ned Rush pint glass. I don't, <laughs> but I need one. I need to get one. Um, yeah. I was thinking about some other things as well, maybe like a mouse mat, but it's just T-shirts right now and hoodies. Um, okay, well, yeah, this is fun. Um, yeah. I think we should do it, definitely do it again, perhaps bring yes. in some more people. Let's do that. Make it challenge. Win. Yeah, uh, some sort of uh, challenge, mm. group challenge. And yeah, okay, well, thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks, Phil. Thank um, you very much. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye.